5 to 10 years from now, pag wala pa rin nagbago sa market dito sa Pilipinas, uh, mawawala na to. Sayang, oo, oh, oh, kasi marami rin talaga dito ng ano eh. Ito na lang talagang alam gawin eh. Kung hindi nyo kami tatangkiligin, baka ngayon pa lang, baka sa susunod na taon, wala na. A bustling city of almost half a million people, Marikina is known as the Philippines' shoe capital. Shoemaking began in 1887 and flourished in the 20th century. Soon, it became a multi-million peso industry known for the quality of its products that could rival imported brands. The magic commonly happens not in big factories, as some might think, but in small streets and houses. Hunched in their corners, Shoemakers make patterns, sew, pound, pull, and put a pair of shoes with their bare hands, a reason why, according to Marikenos, their shoes are sturdier than others. Rolando Santos Jr., or John John, grew up in a family and community that made shoes. Noon, masaya. Maraming, ano, maraming gawaan. Maraming, maraming nagtitinda ng mga merienda. Tapos kanto, ano, bahay-bahay, gawaan talaga yan. Ito, gawaan yan. Tapos, ito, may gawaan. Ito, maliit na bahay ito, may silong. Pag sumilip ka, may gumagawa ng sapatos dyan. Ganon din sa kabila. But the once thriving Marikina shoe industry couldn't stay afloat forever. John John recalls how they started to feel its decline in the 90s with the entry of imported shoes that were cheap but of low quality. It was in 2016 when John John's father, 75-year-old Ollie, one of the oldest and most known shoemakers in the city, sought the help of the most powerful man in the country, President Rodrigo Duterte. Ang sabi niya, yan ang hinihiling mo sa akin, tutulungan kita. Lahat naman ang ginagawa ko dyan, manaibot. Tell you lang kung sino nga da niya. Ang sinabi niya sa akin, after news broke about Ollie being the president's shoemaker, he says business boomed again, not just for him, but for the other shoemakers as well. But their celebration was short-lived when the COVID-19 pandemic hit in 2020. 2019, 2020 Christmas Bazaar. Sobrang lakas ng benta, sobrang daming tao. Kaya kami, sobrang saya namin. May friend ako, may kaibigan ako na masyado malakas ang loob. Sabi niya, lakas ng benta natin. 2020, mas malakas ang benta nito. Kukuha ko ng maraming balat. Nag-pandemic. Pandemic. Dumating na sa kanya yung balat. Pinasara lahat ng gawaan, baon siya sa utang. In August 2020, the Marikina local government said almost 80% of the city's shoemakers had to close down as they could no longer sustain operations. The 20% that survived did so after shifting to online platforms. One of those lucky few is Mar Joseph. So, ngayon, nung nag-pandemic, so yung mga tao, siyempre, puro gadget, cellphone, online, Facebook. Ayun, uh, so doon, parang nag-trial muna, first, first year, uh, bumibili sila, uh, medyo okay naman kasi walang scam masyado. Sa ngayon, palakas siya ng palakas. Now, as the world recovers from COVID, Marikina shoemakers are slowly getting back on their feet as well. Shoemakers have adapted a new strategy, marketing their products on social media and online selling platforms. John John, who put up his own shoe store last year, believes these platforms will make the shoe industry great again. These days, John John is busy attending to bulk orders and pitching to various shoe companies for possible collaborations. His father is likewise occupied with orders. For Ollie, who started making shoe patterns when he was just 10 years old, his dedication to the craft is not something he will ever put aside. Hindi ko kayang itakwil ang paggawa ng sapatos. Pagkat dyan na buhay ang magulang ko, dyan din ako nabubuhay. At dyan din ako nakapag-aaral ng mga anak ko. Isipin mo yung walong bata na pakanin mo araw-araw yun. Mahal ko ang sabatos. Proud ako sa ginagawa ko. Kaya 
nasasabi ko pag interview ko hanggang sa tawol, hanggang sa matayan, sapatos pa rin ng dala ko. Medyo problemado kami sa materials dahil yung mga local industry natin ang gumagawa ng materials ng shoes, hindi nag-stop na eh. Five to ten years from now, pag wala pa rin nagbago sa market dito sa Pilipinas, ah, mawawala na to. Kung tatangkiligan nyo kami, tutulungan nyo yung malilit na manggagawa, tutulungan nyo kami. Parang tinulungan nyo na rin yung susunod na henerasyon.